Welcome to today's Bhagavad Gita reading session. We are reading from chapter 17, shloka number 23, and title, The Divisions of Faith. Before we start, we, I ask for blessings from all the assembled Vaishnavas so that I could do the service for my own purification. And uh, we can recite the verse and then we do word to word translation per and purport. O Om Tat Sad Iti Nirtesho Brahmana Stri Vidya Smritaha Brahmana Ste Nevidesha Yagnesha Vihita Pura Word to word meaning Om Indication of the Supreme. Tat, that. Sat, eternal. Iti, thus. Nirdeshaha, indication. Brahmanaha, of the Supreme. Trividaha, threefold. Smritiha, is considered. Brahmanaha, the Brahmanas. Tena with that Vedaha the Vedic literature Cha also Yagnaha sacrifice Cha also Vihitaha used Pura formally Translation and purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Translation from the beginning of creation, the three words Om Tat Sat were used to indicate the supreme absolute truth. These three symbolic representations were used by Brahmanas while chanting the hymns of the Vedas and during sacrifices for the satisfaction of the supreme. Please repeat. From the beginning of the creation, the, of the, creation, the three words Om Tat Sat were used to indicate the supreme absolute truth. These three symbolic representations were used by Brahmanas while chanting the hymns of the Vedas and during sacrifices for the satisfaction of the Supreme. Purport. It has been explained that penance, sacrifice, charity and foods are divided into three categories, the mode of goodness, passion and ignorance. But whether first class, second class or third class, they all are conditioned, contaminated by the material modes of nature. When they are aimed at the Supreme, Om Tat Sat, the Supreme Personality of God, at the Eternal, they become means for spiritual evaluation. In the spiritual injunction, such an objective is indicated. These three words, Om Tat Sat, particularly indicate the Absolute Truth, the Supreme Personality of God. At. In the Vedic hymns, the o word Om is always found. One who acts without following the regulations of scriptures will not attain the absolute truth. He will get some temporary result, but not the ultimate end of life. The conclusion is that performance of charity, sacrifice and penance must be done in the mode of goodness. Perform performed in the mode of passion or ignorance, they are certainly inferior in quality. The three words Om Tat Sat are uttered in conjunction with the holy name of the Supreme Lord. Example, Om Tat Vishnu. Whenever a Vedic hymn or the holy name of the Supreme Lord is uttered, Om is added. This is an indication of Vedic literature. These three words are taken from Vedic hymns. Om Iti Etat Brahmano Nidhishtam Nama. Rigveda indicates the first goal. Then, Tat Tvam Asi. Chandogaya Upanishad 6, 8, 7 indicates the second goal. And Sad Eva Saumya Chandogaya Upanishad 6, 2, 1 indicates the third goal. Combined, they become Om Tat Sat. Formerly, when Brahma, the first li created living entity, performed sacrifices, he indicated by these three words the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
Therefore, the same principle has always been followed by disciplic succession. So this hymn had a great, has great significance. Bhagavad Gita recommends, therefore, that any work done should be done for Om Tat Sat or for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. When one performs penance, charity and sacrifice with these three words, he is acting in Krishna Consciousness. Krishna Consciousness is a scientific execution of transcendental activities which enables one to return home back to Godhead. There is no loss of energy in acting in such a transcendental way. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Ajnana Trimrandasya Gyananjana Shalakya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama Shri Chaitanya Manobishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamahyam Dadati Svapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Gurum Vaishnavam Shra Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamsha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinabandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Shri Vrindavanishwari Vrishabhanu Stute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakalpa Tarubhyasya Kripa Sundhubhya Evacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Nama Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shri Vasadi Gaurabhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna So as we have listed the name of the ta name of the chapter's title, the divisions of faith. So, before I start discussing, I want to tell uh, a little uh, experience what happened two days ago with me. There was a girl. She came into the shop, and uh, she said that uh, she's um, she's finding she's looking for some spiritual truth. And then I asked her, "What is her background?" And then she told me that she found a guru and uh, he is uh, Shiva himself because he is very expert in Rudra Tandava. And then uh, she started practicing along with him. And after some time she realized that uh, she is more aff aff uh, afflicted, like more attracted towards Rukmini Devi. So she thought that maybe I should become a devotee of Krishna. So then she was practicing Bhakti in the mood of Rukmini. Then she realized that uh, she actually realized that she has this Radha Bhava and then she thought that she is Radha and now she wants to practice in the, m in the mood of Radharani. So I asked her, okay, you are trying out so many spiritual ways, so why not you try something what we teach, the Hare chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And then she said, no, no, I am not trying, I am actually experiencing, I am experiencing with my heart. And then I said, oh, okay, so sorry, like I used the wrong word, not trying, your experience. So why don't you experience chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra? Then she took a book, her chant and, uh, chant and be happy book. And then um, I was about to show her the Bhagavad Gita. And then she said, you guys follow everything with the mind, not with your heart. You are not exponential learning. So the reason I wanted to point out is when you don't uh, have a proper understanding of the Shastra and there is no proper guidance, even though we are inclined to come to a proper spiritual path and then really uh, attend that calling, the spiritual calling, we won't be able to get it because we don't have a proper guidance of proper Shastra. So today we are very fortunate that Srila Prabhupada, we have the books of Srila Prabhupada and we are able to understand so divisions of faith, you know, that particular lady, although she has the spiritual calling, because she doesn't have the faith yet in Prabhupada books, so she's not able to 
uh, relate herself as a servant. And uh, from today's verse, I have uh, drawn the verse into three main sections. So first section, we will be trying to understand, understanding Om as stated in Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam scriptures. And the second, how it is relevant to the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. And the third, Prabhupada at the end of the purport, he says scientific execution of transcendental activities. So we see how everything is arranged with the scientific execution in ISKCON. So beginning of the Omkara. So here in this purport, we are talking a lot about Om Tat Sat, which is referring to the Supreme Personality of Godhead himself. But when we see a little background of where this Omkara has originally come, that is, this Om has come from the heart of the demigod Brahma. And it is a subtle transcendental vibration and it is very potent and self-luminous. So what did Brahma do? With the help of this Omkara, he was able to teach the Vedas to his sons. And then the, he carried out the disciplic succession. And in the disciplic succession, slowly it went to the Brahmana community. So even in here in the purport also we read that this Om Tat Sat is primarily recited by the Brahmanas who are engaged in the ritualistic activity. So we see a connection, how it is coming in. And then this body of the Vedic uh, knowledge is handed over in disciplic succession through the spiritual master until the end of Dvapara Yuga. But then at the end of the Dvapara Yuga, Vyasadeva saw the mentality of the Kali Yuga people. And he understood, okay, these Kali Yuga people are not even able to understand this comprehensive. So let me divide into Vedas. So he divided one Veda into four parts. And then he instructed various schools of sages. And from that transcendental subtle vibration, the Omkara, uh, like we have got so many Vedas and so many Puranas for our easy understanding. Now, let us see a little bit more deeper into what this Omkara has. Omkara has unseen potencies and manifests automatically within the pure heart. It is a representation of absolute truth. Because it's, it is a representation of the absolute truth, it also explains the Supreme Personality, Supreme Soul and Supreme Impersonal Truth. When understood in the disciplic succession, in a proper channel of teachers and through the Shastras. Um, and now we see, the, before this sloka, the, the last 20 second ended with the charity, how it is performed in the mode of ignorance. So Prabhupada writes in the purport saying that, you know, uh, the charity has to be, perf the charity penance has to be performed in the mode of goodness, because it gives a value. Because when one is situated in a mode of goodness, automatically they understand the purpose behind carrying out this order. But when, if you do it in passion or ignorance, you are influenced by the lower nature, you are not able to understand the purpose. So even to understand Om, one has to rise up their level. So Brahmana doesn't mean that who has born into the family of Brahmanas, but who are trained into the rules and regulations who are trained into the Shastra and who are ready to give uh, this Vedic knowledge. So on a highest level, actually a Vaishnava is a pure Brahmana. Not even a Brahmana is considered Brahmana. A Vaishnava is a pure Brahmana. So now we will go to the first section, understanding Om, as stated in Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam scriptures. Om is Translated in various uh, uh, various word-to-word uh, -word meaning in Bhagavatam, one of such translation is O Supreme Lord, addressing the Supreme Lord. And some places Prabhupada uh, was translating as the sign of chanting transcendental glory of the Lord. So in Bhagavad Gita, can, you any, can anyone recall where Krishna says uh, he is the Omkara? Can anyone recall in Bhagavad Gita? Yeah, syllable Om. So in the seventh chapter, Krishna says, Pranaveshu Sarva Vedeshu. Syllable Om, I am in the Vedic scriptures. So Krishna is referring, that is, Om is nothing but Krishna. And uh, you find in the modern practices, there are many yogic schools where they practice uh, the pranayam, 
and they start with this omkara but their understanding of this omkara is that om is impersonal and it has no form and uh, you have to just meditate on the void but just before just few lines before we have just seen om means it consists of supreme personality of god it it has the super soul and it also has an impersonal brahman understanding and also krishna says pranavashu sarva vedeshu i am the om so krishna is a person and uh, uh, in krishna you see all these three aspects because krishna is swayam bhagavan so krishna is so the omkara is not impersonal so krishna and omkara is the same and also um, if we chant the ch chant krishna's name it purifies us as we understand even when you chant om tat sat or any name of the god it purifies our activities because it is combined with our chanting so krishna's powerful name is always accompanied by tapasya charity and sacrifice so it removes all kinds of discrepancies so why they were chanting om in the any kind of vedic rituals it is not to just invoke auspiciousness but it's to invoke our real purpose to understand that omkara means okay i am directed to him om tat sat that means it is he whom i'm directing to and sat is eternal aspect and so that the consciousness of the participants is evolved but again in the kaliyuga uh, people they don't have a proper understanding of what omkara would be of what om is we have already seen in many yogic schools even at the school uh, schools and colleges who are more uh, inclined to teach their students some sanskrit or some yoga or they also teach om as a very impersonal aspect as a nirakara but we should go and tell them that this is not the fact because krishna is saying in the bhagavad gita om means krishna and krishna means completes and it is the sound representation of the supreme personality of god so we are invoking the supreme person by chanting just before we started the purport we are reciting om namo bhagavate vasudevaya so before bhagavate vasudevaya we are always adding this om why because we are addressing bhagwan and om and non different and they're together and they're complete and and sorry and also the purport of all the activities what we perform with the body although the body is temporary but the activities which are related to transcendence they will actually purify us and actually they will become everlasting that's why whatever you do in your devotional service that helps one to slowly gain the eternal benefit like in the if you see satya yoga treta yoga and dwapar yoga many uh, yogis and devotees they get the 12 syllable names or they practice jnana yoga focusing starting with om why because om has everything in it it purifies their mind once the mind is purified your heart is purified then automatically you are situated in a impersonal form impers sorry you are situated on the personal form of the lord when you are situated on the personal form of the lord it's e easily you are able to meditate on the lord and then you enter into the samadhi so this is the actual reason behind it but people taking the uh puranas as just the stories or mythology they think that okay we just need to uh, start practicing om and then we get some peace you don't get peace just by chanting om you get peace because the lord is situated in the om right and uh, krishna says in actually om for om tat sat is the absolute truth which is meant for freedom for all attachment all kinds of attachment and so but what is the tendency of the modern civilization to uh take everything which is in the vedas and use it to their own purposes 
Now we'll see what is the relevance to Hare Krishna Mahamantra. I mean, as a devotees, we are reading Bhagavad Gita, we are learning Om Tat Sat, but then how can we uh, apply this Om Kara in our lives? So whenever we are uh, reciting Bhagavad Gita or Bhagavatam, we are invoking in auspiciousness and remembering the Lord by chanting Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudeva. Or every day you purify your body by applying tilak and then you invoke again the Lord by saying Om Namo Keshavaya Nama, Om Namo Madhavaya Nama, Govindaya Nama. And then you are worshipping the deities. Again you use the Pranav Mantra, Pranava, Omkara in it. So as a devotee we are also respecting it but uh, with a proper understanding. And uh, uh, according to the Vedant, like the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, the Omkara is our Mahavakya. So there are four Mahavakyas of the impersonalist. I don't want to get into those details, but I'm just saying. But for us, the Mahavakya is Om, because we have a personal understanding of this Omkara. So in Satya Yuga, there are four Vedas. But the, all the four Vedas are included in the Omkara. And then in Kali Yuga, the Vedas have been divided into four. And then the same Omkara is manifested in the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. And unless one, but there is a difference between chanting Hare Krishna and the Omkara. How? For chanting Omkara, you have to be Brahmanically qualified. But for chanting Hare Krishna, no qualification is required. Because this is the order of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, because he has empowered the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. So that anyone can chant, you can go and distribute, you can go and sing. And no one is less qualified for chanting Hare Krishna. But for chanting Omkara, if you really want to see the cleansing process, to see the real purpose coming out, you need to be more Brahmanically inclined. But this Brahmanically inclined doesn't mean that you are just such... Um, just practicing cleanliness out and in, that is not enough. But having an understanding of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Who is a Brahmana? Who knows Brahman? Who, who has well versed in an understanding of what is Brahman? Then such a person is called actually a Brahmana. But in Kali Yuga we see everyone is a born Shudra. But then, so we, we have got this uh, uh, Hare Krishna Mahamantra to chant. Therefore, the Shastras recommend that we should be chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Omkara is a mantra and Mahamantra, Hare Krishna Mahamantra is also Mahamantra. And the purpose behind both is to understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, can anyone tell what exactly when we are addressing uh, Hare Krishna Mahamantra, what do we understand? What is Hare means or Krishna means? Who are we addressing? Hare is Rama. Yeah, and Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And Rama is the Supreme Enjoyer. Then if you see Om, A-U-M, that is A is represents uh, Krishna, U represents Radharani, and M represents Jiva. So again, even in there, even if you understand that ab abbreviation, uh, it is both, both means the same. So as uh, Vaishnavas or practicing devotees, we no need to segregate and think that whoever is chanting Om, there are some other people, like they, they are uh, not bona fide, but they may not be chanting with a purpose. So that we, we don't commit offenses towards them. This kind of understanding is required so that we don't commit offenses. But we will have a chance to educate those people. Okay, Omkara means, you're, it's, it's not impersonal, but it's personal feature of the Lord. So whether you chant Omkara or whether you chant Hare Krishna Mahamantra, it's addressing the Supreme Lord. And what is an example of this? You're watering the root of the tree. You water the root of the tree and everything else will be nourished, right? You, you no need to separately go and water the branches, leaves, twigs, fruits, flowers, leaves. You just address the root. So now we, uh, we are in this age, so we have to take instructions and follow according to the uh, time, place and circumstance and according to the order of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because this will help us to eligible to go back, back to Godhead. 
And uh, here in the translation, it says that while chanting the hymns of the Vedas and during sacrifices for the satisfaction of the Supreme. So again, if someone is chanting Omkara, you ask them, what is your purpose? Is it your purpose is to satisfy the Lord? So the purpose has to be established in any kind of uh, thing. Like you are applying, as I was explaining, you are applying tilak all over the body. You, get, you wanted to get purified. But why you want to get purified? So we can establish the Lord and we can establish that lost relationship, the forgotten relationship between us and the Lord. Right? This is our purpose. So whoever is chanting, you can help them to understand that chanting Omkara is not just for the sake of chanting. And the, there is one shloka in Chaitanya Charitamrita Majjalila 17.133. Abhinam nama namino. That means there is no difference between the holy name of the Lord and the Lord himself. So we have to understand again, coming back that, okay, now we know the purpose, why we are chanting Omkara or why we are chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra. But then again, when we are chanting, we should understand that the Lord, name of the Lord and the Lord are non-different. When we chant with such an understanding, maybe initially we may not be chanting with a full conviction, at least by putting some faith in the Lord, in the Shastra, we will be able to come and come to a purified uh, purpose and we will be able to revive back our lost relationship. And then Prabhupada says, everything when one performs penance, charity, sacrifices, with these three words, he is acting in Krishna consciousness. So for the purpose, the purpose of doing any kind of penance, charity or austerity, tapasya, with a proper understanding that this, this is for the satisfaction of the Supreme Lord. Even though they may not, uh, may not be in Krishna consciousness, if they're fixed in this purpose that I'm doing this for the Lord, they are situated in Krishna consciousness. That's why the four sampradayas come into the line. So sometimes, you know, we think that, oh, we are from Gaudiya Vaishnavas. We don't uh, think about other sampradayas. No, but this is wrong mentality. We have to learn to respect other sampradayas, other devotees who are also practicing. Maybe we differ in a little bit of external practic uh, practical uh, terms because Prabhupada made it very easy for us. Like he created morning program. He gave us how to, uh, how to follow the four regulator principles. He gave us minimum number of rounds to chant. So Prabhupada made us very easy. So externals may be differing from the, uh, in the four sampradayas. But if, if all the four sampradayas devotees are following with the same purpose, that is, it is for the satisfaction of the Lord, then they are in Krishna consciousness. And so, uh, like Prabhupada says, it, um, Krishna consciousness is a scientific execution of the transcendental activities which enables one to return home back to Godhead. So, what do you understand by scientific execution? Scientific means it's based on some principles. And execution means a project in which a style is carried out. So, Prabhupada is putting these two words together and saying that whatever the activities we do in our daily Krishna consciousness life is very scientifically arranged. All the principles. Like nothing has been eliminated, but it has been arranged. Like we, every day we wake up at Mangala, we wake up at Brahmamurta, we attend the morning program, we purify our body with uh, decorating with uh, tilak, right? And then we sanctify the food, we offer it to the Lord. Then we, we participate in Kirtan, we study the Shastra, we engage in services. What is this, this all doing? He's systematically in engaging us in the nine process of devotional service, which is he arranged everything so scientifically for us. And then if someone is, um, is a householder, how they can divide their money and apply it for the Lord. Not just like as we read, we don't want to, uh, Prabhupada is saying that don't do charity or penance in the modes of passion or ignorance but you give some donation to the temple, then that becomes a transcendental activity because it has a purpose and it has a satisfaction of Lord involved in it. 
So, Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita are, are emphasizing on the target of absolute truth. We are not just talking about God. So, even if you see the name of Iskon, Prabhupada never, like I was listening to a few recent Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam classes morning, then few of the speakers were mentioning how Prabhupada wa does, never wanted to, it to be named as God consciousness. He was very specified. It should be Krishna consciousness. So even there, he was scientifically arranging it. He is executing that. So that people who don't know, who are deviated, they can understand, okay, Krishna is the one who are we are addressing. Krishna is the one who are we are addressing in the form of Omkara or we are addressing in the form of Hare Krishna Mahamantra. So the conception of the absolute truth that he is Bhagavan, he is Bhagavan, he is the super soul of all living entities and he is the impersonal Brahman. All the features are included in him. That's what Prabhupada is emphasizing and putting together. And there is no um, difference of opinion between the personal feature of the Lord as controller or controller as an impersonal. Like for example, you see the energies of the Lord uh, applied in the universe. Like for example, there are many, there is a government and to run the government, he has, like the Prime Minister has so many subordinates, right? Every uh, act or the will has to pass with the permission of the Prime Minister. Similarly, even if a blade of grass has to move, although why Varunadev has the ability to move the grass, right? But the will, without the will of the Supreme Lord, it cannot be moved. So here we see, although the Lord is not present personally, but His energies are acting. Where are these energies are coming? This is coming from the Lord. But people, if you see, they don't have this understanding. I have encountered one such uh, person. I was uh, learning, I was getting trained in the yoga training and we had the philosophy classes and I was already practicing devotees. So it was Krishna's mercy, I was protected by Prabhupada's books. This person, he was uh, reading Bhagavad Gita for last 18 years. He knows word to word, like shloka to shloka, from front to back. Whereas I, I don't know, any, like I know some purports, some shlokas, but not everything. I don't know from front to back. That's my position. But he, he really puts, pulls out Krishna out of the Bhagavad Gita and he just says, uh, Krishna, is, uh, Krishna is just an actor. Uh, actually, there are five elements and this Kurukshetra is our body. And the Kauravas and Pandavas are the good people and the ba a, go a good, um, uh, how do you say, sorry. Good qualities. Yeah, good qualities and bad qualities. And then uh, he was uh, talking more on the impersonal aspect of the Lord. Uh, and he said that uh, this is all Brahman. Nothing. When you leave everything, you merge into this, like into the voidism. And uh, he was giving an example of how there is a cloth. And there are different threads in the cloth. And if you remove all the threads, there is no cloth. So, I asked him a question. Okay, you said that all the cloth, all the threads are in the cloth and you remove the threads, there is no cloth. But who is the source of this thread? There is someone who has created the thread, right? So, he asked, and then I asked him, uh, Yantra Rudhani Maya. So, the Lord is sitting in the, as a super soul in the heart and he is directing the actions of every living entity. So, how do you address? So, he asked me, so are you Advaita Vadi? So I was like, I didn't know what it means that time. So I was like, I don't know, I follow Iskon. <laughs> so I was very blunt. But uh, he was trying to convince me so much and he was trying to convince the whole class as well. But he was reading Bhagavad Gita for 18 long years. But where is his faith invested in? We are so fortunate that we have a uh, teachers, seniors, gurus and fellow friends and Srila Prabhupada books who are helping us. We might even also have misconception. I'm not saying that we are perfect people. We will also have misconception. But there is someone who is clearing out all these misconceptions for us. But people out there, they don't know these um, ideas. They don't know how to read Bhagavad Gita. They don't understand the purpose of the Bhagavad Gita. 
And then Prabhupada says, uh, people like to give a lot of charity. Like they want to um, uplift the poverty, poor people. Then Prabhupada is saying, the best solution is only Krishna conscious movement. This movement is always kind to the poor. Not only it feeds them, but also gives enlightenment by teaching them how to become Krishna consciousness. So we are not just feeding them, but we are also giving in the form of Shastra and teaching them. And then Prabhupada says, uh, when we are talking about scientific execution, we are opening hundreds and thousands of centers for those who are poor, both in money and knowledge, to enlighten them in Krishna consciousness and reform their character by, t by teaching them how to avoid illicit sex, intoxication, meat eating and gambling which are the most sinful activities and which cause people to suffer life after life. And the best way to use money is to open such a center where all may come live and reform their character. And they can live comfortably without denial of any bodily necessities and they live under spiritual control and live happily, save time for advancement of Krishna consciousness and go back back to Godhead. You need not to scan, uh, squander money on this or that. It should be used for pushing forward for the Krishna consciousness. So, in conclusion, so uh, we understand the chant like Omkara, Om Tatsat is referring to the Supreme Absolute Truth. But then, how we put into our practice is by constantly chanting and hearing the holy name. And then, uh, there is uh, from the sixth canto, it's from the Ajamila's pastime. There is one famous shloka, one who constant, I'm just reading the translation, one who constantly hears and chants the holy name of the Lord and hears and chants about his activities can very easily attain the platform of pure devotional service, which can cleanse the dirt from one's heart. One cannot achieve such purification merely observing vows and performing Vedic ritualistic ceremonies. So someone may claim that, you know, I'm just a Brahmana, I chant every day all these maha big mantras from the Vedas. But if your purpose is not oriented for cleaning your heart, because most of the problems in the world, as my spiritual master, His Holiness Devamrita Swami Maharaj was saying, most of the problems in the world are because of impure hearts. <coughs> but what is the solution is to chant the holy name. So whether we chant Omkara directly by chanting Krishna's name or bringing Omkara and understanding with the purpose and chanting, it is the same. So, but we have to take the recommendation of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for this age. So the shloka which I was quoting before from Chaitanya Charitamrita Majjalila 17.133. Nama Chintamani Krishnastu Chaitanya Rasa Vigraho Purano Shuddha Nitya Mukto Abhinna Nama Namino The holy name of Krishna is transcendentally blissful. It bestows all spiritual benedictions for it is Krishna himself, the reservoir of all pleasure. Krishna's name is complete and it is form of all transcendental mallows. It is not a material name under any condition and it is no less powerful than Krishna himself. Since Krishna's name is not contaminated by material qualities, there is no question of its being involved with Maya. Krishna's name is always liberated and spiritual. It is never conditioned by the laws of material nature. This is because the name of Krishna and Krishna himself are identical. So one may chant, and again this is another shloka from the sixth canto, from Ajamila's pastime again. One who chants the holy name of the Lord, even in the mood of jokingly. Who is an example of uh, chanting in jokingly from the Shastra is Jarasandha. And uh, for musical entertainment, you see people coming in, on the streets when they, we are doing Harinam. People, they just, or they come to the temple and they dance. They're doing for the musical entertainment, but still. Or one who chants very neglectfully. Who is chanting neglectfully? Shishpala. And one, or one who has no understanding, unintentionally someone is chanting. That is, uh, we saw in the case of Ajamila. Still, they will be freed from all reactions of unlimited sins. And then, and what is our mission? Prabhupada um, 
Prabhupada quotes this verse 6.3.31 Tasmat Shankitana Vishnu Jagan Mangalam Amhasam Mahatam Api Kauravya Vidi Ahintaki Nishkritam Sukadeva Goswami continued My dear King, the chanting of the holy name of the Lord is able to approve the reactions of greatest sins. Therefore, the chanting of Sankirtana movement is the most auspicious activity in the entire universe. So please try to understand this so that others will take it seriously. So what is our first duty? Our first duty is to understand. We have a proper understanding of what we are chanting. And then second is to give it to others. So and then when they see that we are chanting, they will also see, oh, they have something in it. So let me take it seriously. So I end up here and I ask if there are any questions, comments or corrections. Yes. 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 So for different demigods, you're worshipping. So my understanding, like, uh, I, I, do, I don't understand the structuring, why they would have structured it. But as I gave you an example of watering the root. root. So even in Bhagavad Gita, we see uh, Krishna says, according to their faith, I will establish their faith stronger according to the demigod they worship. So they may not want to come to me directly. Right? Krishna is understanding the mentality of the jiva. He is saying, they may not come to me directly, but they are coming to my demigods, like my representatives. Okay, let them do the worship. So slowly by engaging in that, as you have pointed out, Om Namo Namah Shivaya, still when they are chanting Om. But if you are chanting, uh, thinking that it is impersonal only, then that is not good. So what is our duty? Is to educate them. We have to be educated. That Om means it is the absolute truth. It's not different. So next time when you see someone, you can help them to clarify this. It's okay. We we just give a try. <laughs> but we all we also respect Durga Devi. We also respect Lord Shiva. L Shiva is considered the best of the Vaishnavas and Durga Devi we see has uh, her strong material uh, energy is coming from Krishna. So we know how to relate with it. So we can slowly educate them. Maybe we will be successful, we are not successful but we give our try. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. So if he wants, he will tell Varun, okay, you can remove the plant, head of grass, otherwise he can. So in this material world, we are doing whatever activities we are doing. The all activities, Krishna is loving us, sanctioning us to do the things. Yes. Just trying to give the example, we come from program and other things. So this is the inspiration given to us by God. Yes. So we always think about it. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. So when we are totally observing Krishna consciousness, so we understand whatever we are doing, we are doing in the right way. Whereas we see the other, we find fault in others. Just like we see this Bhakti Bihari, everybody comes in the temple, they show Bhakti Bihari, Bhakti Bihari. They don't, don't recognize the Jiji, but they chant Bhakti Bihari. Because they have those, they know, they don't 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 know, they
brain meditate on one particular thing. So it's nothing wrong if they are meditating on anyone or anything, they are getting some benefit. So we should think that whoever are they are coming, they are coming for some benefit, they are <coughs> this, uh, allowing them to come. Otherwise, there is not possible to spend the money from <coughs> Delhi, they will spend 5,000, 10,000 to come and take the shit and go back. This is the mercy of the Lord who is giving them. Hare Krishna Prabhu. In the purport in the last place, uh, in the second last uh, line, when one performs penance, charity, and sacrifices with these three words, is acting in Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. So, uh, when, when someone does charity, like putting in Hindi, he can say, Om Tat Okay. So, again, it's a Mm -hmm. So, I'm just asking like parents, say we do Ekadashis mm -hmm. or others, Janmashtri. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, is it that we should say Om Tatsa? It depends like, uh, yeah, I've seen Maharajas when they end the class, they say Om Tatsa. And Prabhupada, if you see in the Srimad Bhagavatam, he wrote the preface, uh, after the preface, he wrote Om Tat Sat. So there's no, there's no harm saying that Om Tat Sat. But it's not the point that you're saying or you're not saying. But when you're saying, you, do you, uh, we have to carry this intention that this is absolute truth and this is for the satisfaction of the Supreme Lord. When you do with that, no problem. But you just do for just for imitation's sake. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, like uh, you see in the first canto in the preface at the end, Prabhupada writes Om Tat Sat. And I've heard also Maharajas sometimes they end class saying Om Tat Sat. So, we, they understand Om Tat Sat means this is referring to that person who is eternal. And as we just uh, have uh, learned, Om means it's the Supreme Bhagavan, Krishna. So you, some, you may be putting the money in the hundi and thinking that Om Tat Sat, you can add this mantra and then say that, okay, this is for the absolute truth and this is for the satisfaction of him. Yeah, then that, that is Krishna consciousness, yes. Yes. Understanding and our full quality is dying in chanting. Then we get more better. Yes. Chanting Om Tatsat also. With understanding it, I think you get more better. Yes. Hare Krishna. Get better, but not full better, only with Yeah, I, I didn't want to touch those ones because I didn't really get a reference for that and I don't have an understanding of those ones. Third goal, yes. That yes. Eternal. That person. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, okay. You're asking me, is it correct? No, no. Yeah, yeah, okay. You're giving a comment. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. 
Sorry, I don't know. But in Sri Lanka, Prabhupada was always preaching against impersonalism. Yes. Warning was all the time. Yes. Even when we don't know what it is, really, we're thinking, why? What's, what's so bad about the person? So, uh, why was he warning us so much? What's wrong with impersonalism? Why was he so against it? Like, if I understand your question, Srila Prabhupada is always warning us, uh, preaching against impersonalism, and he's always warning us why why he has to preach against impersonalism. Say for like, you, I can take you as an example. You're a person, you have a name, you have certain nature and certain qualities. But then I come to your house, knock on you, to your door, and you open the door, and I behave that you are, you're not existent there. How do you feel? This is a very wrong conception. And this is what we are doing to the Lord. The Lord is present as a person. And Lord's energies are there. And Lord is residing in our hearts as a super soul. So why should we uh, deny this fact? Yeah. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna.